Hello, I'm Dr. John Lascalzo, Chief of Hematology Oncology here at the Good Samaritan Cancer Institute. I'd like to talk to you a little bit today about colon cancer. Of course, ideally, uh, we would never get it, but sadly, if I asked for a virtual show of hands out there, do you know of anyone who had colon cancer? There'd be a lot of raised hands. And even more sadly, or tragically, do you know someone, a loved one or friend who's died of colon cancer? Again, sadly, there are a number of hands. So what can we do about that, and how can we reduce that uh, death rate? So the first thing we'd like to do is not get cancer at all, and specifically colon cancer. Uh, this is kind of in the category of doctors are no fun, but yes, eat your fruits and vegetables, just like Mama said. Uh, red and processed meats, there's been a link to more colon cancers. Uh, alcohol should be no more than light, so don't do more than that. Uh, probably the fruits and vegetables, you need the fiber, you need all the parts of the, of the vegetables, so just taking uh, a multivitamin is not quite the same. Uh, it does help, though, if you're low in vitamin D, uh, but sunshine's even better. There's some data about aspirin helping reduce colon cancers. However, it's not robust enough to say just go on aspirin to reduce your risk. It's only if you have a very high risk. But if you happen to be on aspirin because of heart uh, conditions, well, you can take a little solace that there's an added benefit there uh, from the aspirin of reducing your risk a little bit. All right, so, but even with these, you know, healthy diet and exercise and staying slim, still there's a risk of colon cancer. You can modify it a little bit, but definitely not uh, eliminate it. So we need screening. And as most people know, uh, colonoscopies do save lives. The basic recommendation is to have a colonoscopy at age 50. There's a little data that maybe it's going to shift to age 45. Not quite prime time yet, but there does seem to be a little tendency for colon cancers to be popping up a little earlier. Uh, and there's some research going into whether that's the microenvironment, the bacteria in our colon as we shift our diets around, is that what's doing it? But till then, right now, it's age 50. That risk does change if you have a family history, uh, increasing your risk, or inflammatory bowel disease, such as ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease. Uh, that would change your screening recommendations have that colonoscopy, and I hope you do, and I hope it's negative, then generally you're good for 10 years. If they do find a polyp, then you may need another colonoscopy in three to five years based on the pathology. You may see ads on the television, etc., for these uh, things like Cologuard, and they're checking the stool for DNA that uh, is associated with cancer cells that may have sloughed off uh, from the lining does not detect precancerous polyps and everything, so it's not perfect, but it can be done, and if it's negative, then you could be very you know, confident for three years that you don't need any additional screening. All right, so again, now we're kind of going down uh, each, each phase that if you're uh, unfortunate enough to find a colon cancer, uh, sometimes medical oncologists like myself give chemotherapy after surgery. Why do we do that sometimes? Uh, the surgeon, and we have excellent surgeons here, they'll do the job and they will get it all, meaning they'll remove that section of colon that has the cancer in it and the associated and nearby lymph nodes. But even if that's done, one or two cells can escape. And that sort of goes into the sort of fundamental nature of what is cancer, and it's a rogue cell. And if you can really tell me what causes cancer, we'd get a Nobel Prize but uh, it's a mutated cell that's going to start to grow out of control. So that mutant one becomes two, divides to four, eight, 16, you get that geometric progression, and that's that primary tumor. Uh, it can also grow and spread by shedding a cell that will travel off and go down either the lymph node pipe or down a blood vessel pipe. Uh, and that's uh, what you know, medical oncologists are more concerned about and the chance of that happening is direct, directly related to the stage and how advanced the cancer is. That seems pretty logical. The bigger the tumor, the more it's been there, the more invasive it is, 
the more likely it is ha to have shed a cell. So, uh, and it's just those one or two cells. You do CAT scans, you can do PET scans, and those are great. They can detect lesions that are, you know, pea-sized, but once you have something that's the size of a pea, there's a million cells in there. So it's way beyond the technology and the resolution we have to detect one or two cells that may have floated off. So that's where we look at the, at the risk. Uh, and as I said, it's directly proportionate to what stage or how advanced the cancer is when it's, when it's found. This next slide's a little busy, so we're just kind of overview of, of, of this. And this, you're again, you know, we're talking about stages and the stages one, two, three, and four. Stage one is such an early cancer that you definitely don't need any kind of adjuvant chemotherapy. The cure rate is so high uh, that it's definitely not worth the, the side effects. Once you start getting into stage two, you might start to consider it based on some of the detailed features. Uh, T3, the T stage, is how uh, invasive, uh, not just how big the primary tumor is, but how much it invades through the, the wall of the colon. Uh, that can increase your risk. And you notice that little group of letters in the parentheses. We're going to talk about that on the, the next slide. That's uh, preserved um, mismatch repair mechanisms. So if there's just one to three nodes positive or it's uh, otherwise sort of low, low risk, then we may do three months of chemotherapy. If it's stage 3B, we have more than three lymph nodes, then we'll want to do six months of chemotherapy after the surgery because we know that will save lives and will decrease the number of people who relapse. Uh, and that's absolutely worth it. Uh, however, um, there's still concern that we could relapse. But uh, so as promised, that what is that mismatch repair? Uh, that's, again, just to go back to a little biology, you don't want to sort of bore everybody, but you do copy your DNA when you replicate a cell. So as these cancer cells divide, just like any cell, they have to copy over the DNA. So sort of like taking a tally and you have the old strand and you're putting the new base pairs along, they can occasionally, their uh, mistakes can be made. So all of us have these uh, enzymes that when there's a mismatch, a mistake, it'll repair it. And some people lack mismatch repair enzymes. They have a mismatch repair gene deficit. Uh, and they do develop more cancers. And on the one hand, you say, all right, that must be much worse. But those cancers tend to have a lot more mutations in them. And at first blush, you say that might be a very bad thing. It's kind of counterintuitive, but they actually do better. And why that can occur is because when there's lots of breaks and, and changes, that cell could be so mutant that the immune system can start to recognize it. Wow, interesting. So unfortunately, most cancers, 99.9%, .9 do not elicit an, an immune response. We're not supposed to kill ourselves. We're not supposed to attack ourselves with our immune system. So when you're in your mother's womb, there's actually a whole um, process whereby the immune system goes through this sort of almost inventory and any immune cell that might attack you is deleted and gotten rid of. So you don't uh, attack yourself. There are unfortunate people who have things like lupus or rheumatoid arthritis, they have autoimmune diseases and they can be pretty sick, uh, but uh, so that's not supposed to happen. So in general, you don't attack your own uh, cells, you don't attack your cancer cells, but these mismatch repair uh, sometimes you'll see it as microsatellite high, they're more likely to get an immune response to their cancers. So that, it plays into the latest, uh, last 10 years or so, a lot of the research and drug development has been towards immune therapy. And these are drugs that instead of like standard chemotherapy that sort of kill rapidly dividing cells, it tells your, these drugs tell your immune system, hey, go wild, go extra, uh, active, um, almost like, you know, spring break, teenagers on the beach, you know, they go a little wild. Uh, of course, there can be some friendly fire, so you can get almost like a diarrhea colitis from these things, but in general, they're pretty well tolerated, and in those microsatellite high colon cancers, we can see a very good uh, response rate in the metastatic session setting. 
So the big research question right now is if we add immunotherapy to these stage three colon cancers, can we increase the cure rate? And I'm very proud and happy to say that that clinical trial is open right here at uh, the Cancer Institute. And uh, we hope to be uh, enrolling people and increasing the cure rate by using, adding on this immune therapy. All right, now, again, if you are unfortunate to have had a colon cancer, after it's removed, you do get monitored. That's important, both with a blood test, there's this thing called a CEA uh, that's monitored every few months and less frequently as you go along. Uh, CAT scans also are done yearly for several years. Anyone who's had a colon cancer will get a colonoscopy one year later to check to make sure all's clear. Uh, beyond that, it's as indicated, meaning if there is one or two polyps, we'll get a another colonoscopy sooner. If it's all clear, it might be three years. Um, we'll see how that goes, but that is close monitoring afterwards. And why that's also important is, fortunately, even with adjuvant chemo, the risk gets smaller and smaller. In general, getting that adjuvant chemo, chemotherapy reduces your risk by, you know, 30, 40 percent. But there's still a chance it could come back, and if it does, then um, solitary areas, certainly, such as if it relapses in the liver or lung, those can be removed with a uh, you know, curative intent. Some people are even cured of their relapsed cancers. Uh, we are fortunate here at the Cancer Institute at Good Samaritan Hospital to have a surgeon, Dr. John Shu, who is uh, an expert in this and can do liver resections uh, and has done many here, and I'm happy to say, you know, some of them you know, doing very well. Additionally, if there's a solitary lung lesion or just a small cluster, our competent thoracic surgeons can remove those, again, with a curative intent. All right, so to summarize, our colon cancer, try not to get it. You can modify your risk a little bit by healthy living, fruits and veggies, uh, keeping yourself as slim and uh, diet and exercise. But even so, get screened, in general at age 50, uh, then, if, sadly, if you do get it, colon cancer, and it is a little bit advanced, well, getting chemotherapy after surgery can save lives, and our research may help show that in adding immunotherapy can save even more lives. Uh, then you're monitored appropriately afterwards to just check, and uh, in case you do relapse, then there's still a potential for cure with our advanced surgery team. All right, well, I thank you for your attention today and allowing us uh, to enter your homes. Uh, if you want more information regarding uh, our Cancer Institute, go to uh, the website at www.goodsamcancerinstitute.org. Thank you.